good day. Today we're going to look at how to create a geometric construction drawing. This is the type of drawing that will have tangent lines and OG arcs and curves associated with it. It's a little bit more complex than the, the standard drawing that you work with. We'll be looking at how to set it up, how to create it, and throw a few dimensions on. We're going to get started with the drawing setup. We're going to breeze through the drawing setup process and get started drawing as soon as we can. So here we go. So when we get started, one of the things that I like to do is turn my grid off. Grid down here at the bottom. It'll make a clean sweep of our lines and arcs and circles. We'll then move up to the giant letter A and set up our units. So units will be found under Drawing Utilities. And we look at the drawing, and we're looking at basically two decimal place units. And we'll have two decimal place units. We aren't changing any of the angle information. We'll next set up our polar tracking and our orthographic snap. Let's go ahead and we'll set up the polar tracking first. That's here um, using the drop down arrow. Last time uh, we could set it up to anything. I'm going to set it to 5 degrees. Uh, looking at the drawing, it doesn't indicate anything other than 90 degrees, but there are some potentially uh, tangent angled lines. So we'll see what happens here. We'll go with 5 degrees. The second thing we're going to set up is our object snaps. We'll verify that our object snaps are endpoint, midpoint, center, intersection, extension, and perpendicular. If they're not set up like this, then choose the object snap settings and make sure that they're turned on. Don't worry about tangent. We're going to be using that in this drawing, but we're going to use that as a pop-up tool. Lastly, we're going to create some layers. So we'll choose the Layer Properties tool, create a brand new layer. We'll make it Object Lines. Uh, I got a spell right here. Just double click on it and you can edit it. We'll do center lines. We'll do dimensions. Just to show you a few of those, we'll put some colors on these. So we'll use the darker orange, uh, green center line. So we'll use a slightly darker green. And then we'll use a uh, we'll go with the darker purple today with the uh, dimension lines. Uh, center lines need to have a line type set, so we're going to click the continuous line type, load center lines. This time this drawing is about six inches, seven inches, about six inches in uh, width. Uh, we're going to go ahead and do center two, which is half the scale of center lines. Um, we also need to set up our object line weight at a half millimeter. So when we print it, it'll look sharp. And we're all set and ready to roll. So that's the basic setup process. And now we'll get started with uh, center lines to begin. So we'll choose center as our current working layer. And we'll draw a line, one horizontally and one vertically. So no, remember how big these lines get, because right now that line is 10 inches long. Remember my object is no more than six or seven inches. So I'm going to go ahead and make it just a little bit closer to eight inches. And then we're going to draw one more line. Again, to pop these up, right mouse click to stop, and then right mouse click to repeat the line. I'm just going to go ahead and, and I can either go right from the midpoint, which sometimes is a good move, other times it's not. We're going to go ahead and grab it right from the midpoint. But then what I'll do is I'll grab this and stretch this down. And since I did that and I want to keep them basically at the midpoint, I can grab the midpoint and move the midpoint back up. So using the grip tools allows me to manage and stretch individual lines. Works really good for initial layout of the center lines. Hit the escape key on the keyboard, that'll get rid of the grip tool. So when you look at the drawing, this is basically the center of the universe of the shape. And what we're going to need to do is create a, um, a series of center lines both above and below of the shape. To do that, we're going to use the offset command. So I'm going to offset 3.75. And so 3.75 is the linear offset from the vertical line over to the right. 
it's also the offset of the horizontal line down if you look at the drawing. And again, you always want to begin with the center lines because the center lines predicate all the layout. And the other offset that we have is 2.25. That's the original center line up and the original vertical center line to the left. But now this starts to look very confusing. So here's what I like to do. I like to grip and shrink. Grip and shrink. Grip and shrink. And again, make sure you don't pick off to the side that you pick basically vertical or horizontal to ensure that you have the right uh, information. Now, if the center lines aren't perfectly centered, you can always perfectly center them if you choose to, as long as you don't manipulate it. So we can move this down, we can move this across, and we're not manipulating the point, we're just manipulating the line. We can't change that location. So that's our three center point layout locations. From there, we're going to begin creating the shape. Now I prescribe to the design environment of creating the outside shape first and then coming back and detailing the objects inside. Other instructors will create the inside data first and then work to the outside shape. Uh, both, both methods are fine, it's just you find your niche and uh, work from there. So we're going to go ahead and switch to our layer for object lines and we're going to choose a circle. Now the type of circle that we create is important because it's telling us at the bottom that we've got a radius of one inch. So I'm going to choose a center radius circle and there's different types of circles to create. The most common are center radius and center diameter. So we're going to go ahead and magnify, select that location. We're going to do a radius of 1.0 inches. Now it says that there's two of them, which, which also indicates that there's a circle center radius of one inch on the top part also. So we've got two outside circles. We have another circle in the middle that says that it's a radius of 2.25. So 2.25. And the big thing is, you're not going to get it exactly 2.25. It's going to jump right around 2.25. You can see 2.26, blah, blah. Not going to happen. So 2.25, type it in. So now we've got our three core circles for the outside shape. We now need to draw some tangent lines across the top and tangent arcs across the bottom. Well, we'll do the tangent arcs first. The reason being is because we don't draw them as arcs, we draw them as circles. You'll notice that under the circle tool, we've got a tangent tangent radius option which means that if I pick tangent tangent radius, select the tangent point on the circle because we know that it's going to be the bottom of this circle and it's going to be the side of this circle. That one has a radius as the dimension uh, sets it at three inches. So I type that, hit the enter, and there's a three inch radius circle because that's what it specifies that's tangent to those two options. We'll do the same thing, tangent tangent radius, pick the bottom of the center circle, pick the side of this circle, and this one happens to be another 3 inch point, 3.00 inch radius. Don't worry that they overlap, we'll clean all that up here in just a couple of minutes. So now we've got to create lines. So when we create tangent lines, it's a multi-step process so we pick the line command but before we actually pick a starting point because we don't know the exact tangency location this intersection is not going to be the tangency point so how do we get the line to be drawn tangent well we first start with the line command and this location is not the tangency point the tangency point is going to be somewhere along the edge of this circle and somewhere along the edge of the middle circle. To make this work, we're going to have to use the shift and right mouse button to pop up a tangent option. So the shift plus the right mouse button pops up this object stamp menu. 
We'll then choose tangent. We'll pick our first tangency point on the small circle. We have to do the same thing because we just can't pick the point because it's going to try to pick the center or it might pick an intersection. And neither are tangents. So we have to do it twice. Shift, right mouse button, tangent. And then right mouse click and enter. We do the same thing again. Line, shift, right mouse button, tangent, pick the big circle. Shift, right mouse button, tangent, pick the small circle right mouse click enter so it, it's a multi-step process line shift right mouse button to bring up the object snap that's good for only one use that's only good for one use for that one click on the object and then you have to do it a second time so now we get the trim so we're gonna go ahead and pick trim I'm gonna go ahead and pick the three big circles as my trimming tools right mouse click after we're done selecting objects we always right mouse click and then we're going to go ahead and trim away the big circles. So now I've got three circles with some smaller circles. Hmm. So we don't need these inside circle things. So since we don't need those inside circles, we're going to go ahead and pick cutting edges along the edge here. Right mouse click and then select the inside arcs. And we'll draw a circle. This time it's going to be a center diameter circle because the dimension that's specified here is a one inch diameter. And it says that there's two of those so we'll choose center diameter again and we'll type one inch. What makes this interesting though is that the center of this is a polygon. Hmm. So this polygon that we're looking at has eight sides, otherwise known as an octagon. So you'll notice that the object that we're creating is a polygon. Well, a polygon, there's actually a command for it. The command is actually found under the rectangle. It's kind of stuck under the rectangle here, and it's called polygon. So when we choose the polygon, it first asks how many sides do we need? Well, this happens to be an octagon, which is eight sides. It wants to know where the center of the polygon is. So I'm going to magnify and select the center of the polygon. But then it asks us a question that you're, you're probably not familiar with. Is it going to be inscribed or circumscribed? Well, if you take a look at the object, You'll notice that the dimension, the three inch dimension of the polygon is across two flat surfaces. Whenever you see a dimension across flat surfaces on a polygon, the answer is circumscribed. If you see the dimension between two points or on the polygon, then it is inscribed. And you might be saying, well, it doesn't really make a difference. Well, hang on a second. I'm going to create you a the circumscribed and the inscribed polygon, and then you'll know your answer. So I'm going to do the circumscribed polygon, because that is the one that we're asking for. And it asks us for the radius now. It needs to know what the polar radius is. So keeping it straight, I'm going to go ahead and do a polar radius. And this one happens to be 1.50 inches. Again, flat to flat is 3 inches half of that would be the radius. So I'm going to go ahead and do a polygon again. This time eight sides, center in the same spot. I'm going to choose inscribe this time. And we're going to do the radius of three inches. Oh, wrong. Should have done the radius of 1.5 inches. Eight sides, center of the polygon, inscribed, radius 1.5. Now, there is a difference, and it's significant, and that's only a 1.5 inch radius object. Imagine if the object was actually bigger. 
So inscribe does make a difference than circumscribe. So don't get them confused. Remember, watch the dimensions. If the dimensions are flat surface to flat surface, it's a circumscribed polygon. Just wanted to make sure I deleted the correct one. OK. And sometimes you have to put dimensions on objects just to test their size. So now we've got our basic shape created. Successfully, you've created an OG curve, which is a tangent arc starting in one direction, transforming into another direction, and then retransforming back to the original direction. So you've created this OG curve. You've created tangent linear lines. Everything looks great. Let's talk about dimensions. You've put on many dimensions, you've put some dimensions on already, on other drawings. But what if we wanted to put on a radius dimension here and indicate the outside radius is one inch? Well, that's perfect. And we can go ahead and select it, grip it, select it, and make the precision two decimal places. Perfect. If I double click on it, though, I can change what it says. So the problem is is that I can't edit this if I just double click. So I'm going to need to edit the text. Or I have to create a special leader because I need to put in 2x because I need to indicate that this is two times the radius. Now if I just do that, look what happens. It doesn't work. I can undo it and it's okay. So are there any options that I can edit with? Well, there is a dimension style that I could set up as an override. And if I override it, I can add certain things to it. Now I can also do a text edit. Okay, T-E-D-I-T -E is text edit. I can select the text, and this is where we were just a couple of seconds ago. And I should be able to add two times. And there's a lot of different options that we can work with. We can add different symbols uh, in different items. However, I don't want to replace the text. I just want to edit the text. And so what I did was I clicked in the space, left mouse click, used the arrow keys on my keyboard to arrow all the way to the left so I can type the 2 and the X. So I can indicate the 2X. Now if you really want to make it look good, put a couple of spaces in there and then it's 2 capital X R1. We have to do that again with the circle. So we're going to go ahead and do another dimension. This time it's going to be a diameter. This time it's going to also be on that circle. So I can double click, get into the editor. You'll notice that the cursor is blinking right in front of the number one. I can type two space x space and then click out on the screen or choose close text editor and I can edit that text. Now I also need to change the precision to two decimal places. I can still do that even after I've made that text edit. So it knows the dimensional value. It also knows that there's some additional text added to it. Linear text and other text, same scenario. When we do dimensions, we always want to dimension center lines and we want to dimension between center lines. And again, we can always right mouse click and do a quick precision change, or we can go into dimension styles and set all, all that up. That's on another video. I do need to change this from the object layer to the dimension layer, however. But I wanted to give you a little bit of an idea of how to dimension. Now the other thing that we do need to dimension is this polygon. We'll flip over and 
put that on dimension. The polygon dimension is different because it's going to be an aligned dimension. And we're going to pick this edge and this edge. And notice that what it does is it creates an aligned or a linear dimension between those locations. And again, edit that back with the precision down to two decimal places. The rest of the dimensions that are placed are linear based dimensions. Again, make sure that you select very clean locations for that to occur. Well, have a great day. Hope you've enjoyed the uh, geometric construction video.